Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our machine learning seminar. Uh, today, we'll have a pleasure to have a presentation from uh, Dr. Josh Gunn uh, Sirai Zade uh, from the University of Luxembourg, uh, who will have a talk on the topic that is already uh, visible on the screen. Um, so, Josh Gunn, please uh, go ahead. The virtual floor is, is yours. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, thank you for introducing me. Um, yeah, I have been a postdoc uh, in the fields of uh, natural language processing, AI, uh, machine and deep learning for last couple of years. And in this talk, I am going to um, yeah talk about the newest deep learning technologies in the natural language understanding, how we call it uh, these days. So let me give you an overview. Um, about my talk. Um, so I will first um, demonstrate what is very famous these days. Uh, this is uh, ChatGPT, uh, and I'm not going to yeah to to chat with it, but uh, I will just uh, show what technology is behind it, and then I will give. Um, uh, um, an overview over the subfields uh, which are used in order to create such a tool. And then we can go more into the details, into the deep learning uh, to give some mathematical um, intuition um, for it. And then we will dive into the world of uh, yeah, NLP or natural language understanding, as we say it these days, uh, into the text representations and how we actually go from vectors to sentences. So let me jump in uh, straight. So ChatGPT impressed everyone. So and uh, so let's look what is uh, the technology behind it. And uh, it's actually not that it's easy, of course, on one hand, but it's also not that easy. So as you see, uh, OpenAI uh, shows many st steps uh, in training of uh, ChatGPT. So let's look at the first step. Um, so um, data uh, is collected, right, and then uh, a laborer, actually, a laborer is its human being uh, who uh, demonstrates the desired output behavior, right? Uh, and then this data is used to fine tune uh, ChatGPT, ChatGPT 3.5, uh, right? So, um, and then um, there is another uh, model, which is called a reward model. Then uh, the a laborer again ranks the outputs uh, from best to worst, right? And then again, um, this uh, reward model is, uh, is used, uh, is trained actually. So, and uh, at the end, uh, we have um, optimizing uh, yeah, so strategy. So, and ChatGPT actually, or OpenAI, people call it reinforcement learning. But uh, yeah, we, we know it also as adversarial learning, or also from uh, yeah, computer vision, from GANs. So, this is um, actually where uh, two models a uh, little bit compete uh, against each other. So we have the, the, the chat uh, model and the reward model, actually. So this is what's happening. It's, it's a complicated setup, uh, but um, yeah, uh, the, the, the most important thing in ChatGPT is that it proved everyone that a, a meaningful chatbot for, uh, can be realized. Uh, so this is the, the, the main point here. So uh, let me then give you uh, an overview over the, over the subfields. So uh, for many uh, people, uh, ChatGPT, it just occurred out of the nothing, but for us uh, and our uh, group or our um, uh, machine learning seminar, of course, consists of uh, people who are in this field in deep learning. And uh, you know that it is uh, a, a result of uh, long-term uh, yeah, long-term developments in, uh, in, in, in the natural language processing, in deep learning. So um, 
let me give you some uh, yeah intuition. So one part of it, uh, it comes. Uh, so this graph, what I'm showing to you, uh, needs to be uh, read from yeah from top, probably to top left to till till the down. So uh, on one hand, we have the knowledges from linguistics, and this go back um, to, uh, to 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 think uh, what we call language model. Or uh, classically, like in the 80s, 90s, um, hidden Markov, uh, Markov models. So Markov, uh, Markov was a Russian uh, statistician, mathematician, actually, who discovered that uh, the characters in a text, they follow to, um, to a certain um, pattern. Yeah, so actually, uh, in, in one language, you can um, actually calculate the probability of the next character um, occurring uh, in, in, in a word. Um, so, and after that, uh, like I said, in, in the 80s, 90s, uh, a, an algorithm was developed, which is called hidden markup uh, models, which is actually a Bayesian statistics or a predictive model. and uh, and it has hidden states, what we uh, later on in deep learning also call um, hidden layers. So it's there are some similarities. So on the other hand, in order to do um, yeah uh, natural language processing or to create a chatbot like this, um, much of the knowledge comes from information retrieval. So in in the information retrieval, um, um, when the yeah the, the documents were indexed, um, uh, a strategy was created, which is called doc term uh, document fragrances, uh, what we call TF-IDFs. And this uh, is actually representing a word inside of a document. So I will give uh, you later on also an example. So it's actually a very powerful uh, thing to do, which um, uh, automatically uh, yeah, can um, uh, cluster or gives you, you know, like the, the data set, the, a numerical representation for clustering the documents on one hand or the words uh, on the other hand. Uh, so, and this uh, lead uh, led to vector space model. And then there are some other applications like uh, latent uh, semantic analysis um uh, which actually can uh, create even topics um from uh, doc documents so as we see in this field um there are um, many this is the, the the same coin but it has many sides so we can do with the same technology uh, many things that's why actually uh, with uh, emergence of uh, deep learning technologies in NLP um the the the, the uh, researchers uh, saw a unification process so that's why it's called today natural language understanding uh, because it it goes beyond uh, natural language processing right and in 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 this middle bubble uh, this is kind of his history it's not strictly historical but yeah kind of the technologies they depend uh, on each other so where um, yeah deep learning waves wave is uh, more or less uh, depicted of course logistic regression also goes back to statistics and was there uh, uh, right then uh, we had like deep learning uh, phase uh, then in the again in the 90s in the uh, beginning of 2000s uh, long short term memory was developed which can um, handle text data uh, better uh, then uh, in 2013 word to vec algorithm was published which actually kind of combines the shallow a shallow network which is basically reg regression with uh, with the notion of a vector space model so that's why it's it's actually with the help of um yeah of uh, a regression or of a shallow network it creates actually vectors for words yeah and uh, what we don't uh, uh, or what, what we uh, cannot forget it uh, was also done for speech so it's also uh, there's also a unification 
So now we are talking to a chatbot. So we, um, yeah, uh, communicate with a chatbot through a, a text prompt or through a terminal. But in the future, um, or of course, at the same time, you see it, we will also be able to communicate uh, with it uh, acoustically, verbally, like just talking, like I'm talking to you. So it's like uh, it's all also there. And in order to uh, yeah to assist this process, um, uh, algorithms like WAV to VEC or uh, WAV to VEC two were created, um, and this uh, make from acoustic data vectors actually. So and there are uh, some other uh, uh, algorithms or uh, technologies um, like sec to sec, sequence to sequence. Um, which um, uh, later on also um, used um, what we call attention model. And this um, attention model uh, was used in uh, what we call transformers, and it's culminated in, in a very famous uh, yeah, language model, which is called BERT or BRT, uh, depending how you want to call it. Uh, and BERT um, is, yeah, is bidirectional transformer, which transforms uh, language. I will talk about also about it uh, or a text. And uh, yeah, and this all, uh, you know, like the also like the, the theory of artificial intelligence chatbot, it, chatbots or the notion of chatbots was also there, like uh, till actually from the beginning of 60s, 50s, 60s. Um, but it was rule based. It was uh, very uh, primitive and very easy to uh, to uh, confuse, you know, uh, and it felt very mechanic. Yeah, but after this uh, technologies emerged and it was um, yeah uh, kind of unified. Uh, now, as we see in in the case of ChatGPT, it's uh, yeah very. Uh, almost very human-like, <laughs> of course, not absolutely, but yeah, it's um, it answers questions, it solves problems, it creates code snippets for you, so it's a very uh, powerful uh, machine. And uh, you see on the left side again, uh, you know, like this uh, doesn't end with with a chatbot. Um, it uh, also goes. Uh, beyond it and or combines with it or brings with it other components, uh, which is uh, text mining, uh, topic modeling, which is also sentiment analysis. So there are, the, the field is growing and I, I am sure um, uh, you can feel now, um, yeah, the whole um, uh, masters or bachelors uh, only with natural language understanding, only, only with these technologies. Uh, because this field uh, is growing so fast and uh, yeah um, and also like this field uh, has an impact on how a chatbot behaves yeah uh, because the research from let's say sentiment analysis uh, it can also influence the chatbot so the chatbot can um, yeah give, give um, you certain feelings or certain sentiments so it's not that mechanic it used to be so and you see why actually where this uh, yeah this subfield where this knowledge actually coming from uh, from which research so uh, yeah let me just uh, show you some uh, again some subfields um, which are also there on topics applications you can call it uh, as you wish with some selected these are also selected publications I think that the, 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 the publication uh, in this field uh, goes so fast, it's, uh, you cannot catch up. Yeah, but uh, you can imagine again, uh, there is a field which is called machine translation and much of, uh, of algorithms come, comes actually from machine translation, uh, also sec sequence to sequence or, or autoencoders, how we call them. Um, there is a field which is called question an answering um, there is um, a field which deals with conversations. This again goes back to a little bit to uh, yeah linguistics to um, to to uh, also like to social sciences a little bit how conversations are made. 
Um, and uh, they are also uh, classical fields inside of computer science, like uh, parsing, right? Uh, how do you parse uh, the text actually the best? Uh, and of course, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are not only talking to, to a chatbot through a prompt, uh, you know, like uh, um, in the future, it will be possible to, and not in the future, but now actually it's almost possible to talk to it verbally, acoustically. So this is speech processing. Uh, so, uh, and uh, speech processing also was there for a long time. It was its own field uh, and it's uh, kind of uh, now taking part in this unification process. Yeah, um, so, and you have, of course, uh, many other fields, um, like, uh, let's say, part of speech tagging, with, which is very specific for uh, yeah, natural language processing um, uh, or named entity recognition. So, and uh, I mean, it's like probably very interesting to end all these applications field, uh, fields with summarization at the end. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, there, 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 there are many fields of text mining, um, and one of them would be summarization, text summarization, which is also uh, an interesting uh, field. Yeah, and this uh, the, the the publications uh, you see the references uh, they are just uh, some pics, um, and the field is growing very fast actually. So let me uh, again go back and just um, yeah just uh, think about what what is uh, machine learning and what is the aim why are, the, are we applying machine learning deep learning uh, in in into these fields so uh, let's imagine we have um, a demo app and this app greets people let's say it's like very very simple chatbot and you just log in and it uh, tells you good morning or good afternoon. So what you can do and what was done in the chatbots, uh, like maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was uh, hard coded actually. So, and in our uh, example, um, yeah, it was just assumed, okay, until uh, 12 o'clock, uh, until, yeah, you know, like afternoon, um you uh, or the app can greet the people with good morning and uh, as soon as the time goes uh, higher or upper than uh, 12 o'clock then uh, you greet them with good day or or good evening and uh, maybe after like uh, uh, 18 uh, uh, or uh, i don't know like 7 18 or 19 o'clock you say uh, uh, good evening uh, so th this would be this it's a very easy thing to do uh, uh, like to hard code it but um, of course uh, it may depend on the culture how you um, greet people it may depend on the enterprise so the best thing is to go and to learn it from data actually how are people um, doing it uh, and of course in many things how people answer questions uh, uh, in many things, it's a good idea to uh, get this information from data and not uh, hard coded at all. <laughs> yeah, but you see here um, um, the, uh, how uh, it's um, actually emerges into the training uh, data. So you see it above. This is our training data and into the learning process, into the learning uh, algorithm. Uh, and it's actually, if you would imagine it in two dimensional space, it's just a cutting line. You could say, okay, uh, the last person who said good morning, in our case, it's uh, 11, um, six, right in, in our data set. So till 11, six, uh, yeah, there you, you put a line, you know, like you separate say good morning, but uh, this is a small data set, right? And human beings create uh, all kinds of things. And it could be that that there is someone who uh, told, who said good morning in, in the afternoon, actually in 14 o'clock or, you know, like 15. Yeah, so your algorithm, you know, like just um, to make a linear separation is not that easy in, in deep learning. So that's why also like deep learning algorithms in the beginning, uh, they um, also had a mechanical feel to them. 
uh, which we solved, of course, with uh, uh, with deep learning, with non nonlinear uh, separation, nonlinear activation functions, um, um, or, or if you if it's like with uh, uh, if it's um, complex um, and has many dimensions, then it's uh, yeah nonlinear hyperplane. Actually, let's let's put it this way. So. Um, yeah, and another thing is like in this good morning uh, application, we have uh, also kind of very well uh, understandable time stamp, but not everything in the life is, um, yeah, is um, actually a number. So also another question which occurs how you convert things into numbers, especially in our case, how, how you convert the, the sound waves or the written text uh, or the type text into the numbers, how how you represent them best. So this is um, this is also one of the questions. And another thing I would uh, like to show you, actually, in 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 my opinion, in deep learning research, there is a big distinction between um, between supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, uh, which is good, but. I think at the end they all aim the same and they go back the same. So in our case, it doesn't matter if um, if this uh, application, if our training data, if it's let's say historic data, it's if it happened, you know, like twenty years ago, or if someone is sitting there and uh, you know, like uh, training this app. So app says good morning and the, the person says, or the laborer says, no, it's not, it's actually evening or something like that. And the, the algorithm is, uh, you know, like trained again. So um, it actually, again, for me, it's um, different size uh, sides of the same coin. Um, so basically at the end, everything is a data, data feedback. So interesting uh, is when uh, you have uh, um, adversarial training, uh, when you train two, two networks playing, uh, let's say, against each other. So this is, uh, of course, um, yeah, a special case. <laughs> and um, this, of course, yeah, uh, also works very fine in, uh, in, in some cases. Um, and it's just easier. It can uh, be automated uh, very fast. And uh, yeah. So these are some uh, notions. So you all know um, uh, about artificial neural networks. I uh, probably will uh, skip it. So what is important just to say we have input layer, we have hidden layers, we have output layer. Yeah, but as I said, uh, which is most important probably from mathematical point of view, is um, two, two things actually. These are two things. So the activation function we use, uh, and this activation function here it uh, actually enables um, a non-linear separation in, in the data set. So and because we have uh, yeah many uh, let's say many layers and uh, many uh, input nodes. So this would be the layers would be here um, um, vertical, uh, like horizontal, and the inputs would be um, 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 vertical. Um, we can create a very granular imprint of the data, which is very important in uh, in uh, NLP, in uh, NLU, in natural language understanding, because yeah, text data text consist of a lot of words and it's a lot of information. We can uh, create a lot of sentences. Basically, in, in the time of Chomsky, uh, we would say uh, we can create uh, endless amount of sentences. So that's why deep learning performs so good, actually so well. But uh, with this also comes the downside. Um, the downside is that these models are very data hungry and uh, computationally very intense. Uh, so that's why also we need um, computational power, supercomputers. And I will also talk about that. So which uh, makes the life of, yeah, um, machine learning uh, researchers easier. So, uh, yeah. So 
I will just scratch a little bit uh, uh, speech recognition. Uh, so as I said, you can create uh, yeah representation from text, but also you can uh, create representation from speech from uh, from sound waves, which is called acoustic model. And again, this is probably a, a perfect example for language model. It's just a probabilistic model, uh, which uh, assigns, um, yeah, to 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 a uh, uh, uttered word to a, to the said say the said or to the said uh, let's say um, audio wave uh, a word which it might be. So, but I, as you see, also it needs uh, a lot of hours of speech, and it was historically done with uh, HMMs, with hidden Markov models. But these days we use also deep learning, and there are also uh, uh, many ways of processing it. Uh, you can process it um, with MFCC. Uh, this would be one dimensional uh, vector, uh, which is created with. Um, yeah, uh, with pre pre-processing, but you can also use, um, you know, like two-dimensional uh, representation, uh, like uh, in in computer vision. So also, you can actually uh, use um, plain uh, text, uh, very similar to computer vision. Uh, also, we we will see about this. So uh, and let's go back to text. So what, what what is uh, what do we need actually for words? So what we need is a numerical representation. This means converting text into numbers, yeah. And we can do it in many ways. Uh, we can count them. We can uh, take their positions into account, their context. But um, yeah, uh, the most important thing is probably is. Uh, how this numerical value represent uh, represents the word the best so this is the crucial question and i i think also i have a feeling in natural language understanding many people just go and apply all the algorithms um, without thinking too much um, about where these numbers come from actually and how well these numbers actually represent the phenomenon um, we we wanna ca catch, so the, the the metrics and yeah the, the understanding of the phenomenon is very very important, and um, of course we create numerical representation for for a word, uh, but then we can concatenate it together uh, and uh, make it to a sentence, or we can also build a whole representation for a document. So it goes for all uh, all these levels. So and uh, yeah, there is a hype about uh, ChatGPT, and I wanted to give you um, probably a small, very funny example which I enjoy to use and which is very interesting. So um, um, so let me yeah first show you this one. Probably because this one explains the best uh, how you can vectorize a text actually, uh, and how the text, um, um, yeah, might uh, be uh, organized or chunked into meaningful representation. So we uh, here we have our toy corpus. So it has four um, texts in it. So the first one uh, is about uh, animals, about pets, dogs, cats, bats, and the third one. And the second and the last one um, uh, is about uh, algorithms or computer science. It's just I invented it, you know. And if I, I if I run this code, and uh, so it's uh, I use a Scikit-Learn uh, library, which is uh, very um, uh, very um, um, very very um, famous in machine learning. Um, so it's very easy to use. So you see, it's not that much line of lines of code. So this is what um, a computer, uh, not a computer, what the algorithm actually does. Maybe how how well visible are the results actually? Can I? It doesn't look that well. Let me. 
Can, can you can you tell us whether it is a pre-trained model or it is a just a clear model that you are training? Because not probably not everybody is familiar with those libraries. Uh, okay, so what I do here actually, so what I do here is I I I I import these libraries. So but it's not actually that important. I have this variable here which is called corpus, and I create a count vectorizer, right? And then actually uh, see the, actually this one is what we are seeing here. So actually I, yeah, I format it uh, actually here, here is it, here. So, and here we have a beautiful layout and here we have a beautiful layout. So this is where it's, uh, it's actually shown up. So let me, th this is, uh, basic counting, so nothing uh, special happens there. There's, there, there's. Uh, let's say there's uh, here in this st step. There's no mathematics behind it. So what the algorithm just does, it uh, creates uh, what we call a dictionary, which is just all words in all documents. So this is this one. So this is our dictionary. And it goes, it's a little bit longer. And this is our, uh, so documents, these are our documents. And it just puts the count of a word um, when it occurs in one document. And if not, it, it is uh, zero. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it counts the words. Yeah, but it is. But this one is a very powerful representation, because you see, uh, similar words because they occur in the same documents, they will have very similar vectors. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you see here. For example, cats and bats and dogs, they have here in my toy example, exactly identical uh, vectors. Why? Because they occur in the same document. Here, my document being a line. Yeah? Mm -hmm. is, is, yeah? Does it make identical, sense? Identical, sorry, identical compared to the whole, uh, like uh, the whole English dictionary, right? You mean? No, no. It's just that the words here are the words from here. Yes, yes, yes. I, I got that. I mean, the, the 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 vectors are not clearly very similar. I'm I'm asking if you meant that uh, they are similar compared to the whole language dictionary, English language dictionary. I think the, the At the end, if if you create it from like a bigger text, yes. In our case, it's uh, from um, from what you created it, right? And this this uh, algorithms they are what we call language independent. So they you can apply it to any language. If you if if I would have here German documents. Then it was doing... No, no, no. I got that. I got that. Uh, you said that these vectors for the for these four documents are similar to each other because they are they are from one document, right? Uh, ve vectors for words, yeah. Yes, you said that uh, vectors for document one, for document two, for document three, for document four are similar because they are from one document. They are, they are actually from one text, one corpus. Um... It's a similar topic. No, you know what I mean? Like a vector is all of it. And it's a number, a scalar in it. Yes, 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 yes. I got that. They, so they, you didn't say that the, the vectors are similar. You didn't say that, right? The vectors for words are similar, yeah. Which occur in the same document. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you know, like, like cats, and bats, they are similar because they occur here in the same dogs, cats, and here cats, 
So that's why they get similar. So this is the intuition be, be, behind it, right? And this is, uh, yeah, uh, what leads later on to uh, to this word to vec algorithm, which I'm going to present next, uh, which actually created this uh, deep learning wave of natural language understanding. And you can, so what I do here actually, I uh, commented it out because I uh, did it only once. So I have here a corpus, a small corpus, and I train uh, this model with this corpus, then I save it, then I open it. This is just side information. So, and so what, it can do now. Let me run it. If I uh, find the run <laughs> um, button, so oh no, it's uh, running the vectorizing. Let me run it here. So I am running it, and what what I am asking this model is, I am giving it three words. This is tea, coffee, and car, right? And I asked the model which one does not match there. And it uh, shows me uh, that car is, does, uh, car is the one which is not matching there, right? This is the interesting thing because uh, how, you know, like how this has no hard coded rules. The model, it had only uh, a corpus, right? But uh, and it uh, looks just into sentences. So word to vec doesn't look into whole documents, but only sentences. But because it knows that coffee and tea, they they share similar words, uh, you know, like similar sentences. Uh, so these words are more similar in vector space than the word car. Yeah. Th does that make sense? Yeah, so, uh, and uh, we can go even further. We can also see um, uh, most close words in, in the vector space. So if we get the word president, it gives us words like presidency, governor, which is actually almost a synonym, chairman, right? Um, uh, chancellor even. I mean, this is amazing, right? So, um, or let's say city to city, it gives you town, uh, you know, suburbs, uh, downtown, uh, Bronx, Bronx is uh, also a suburb, right? Or to coffee, it gives you sugar, uh, you know, cocoa, uh, cotton, because cotton is also grown, you know, like, so it's, um, it's amazing. It's amazing thing. And to see how it works again, I have here like a toy corpus. So again, with dogs and cats, because I love dogs and cats. So, um, and, uh, you know, let, let's say we put, uh, around them, the similar words like friend. Yeah. Then the model will, will think, okay, cut, uh, dogs and cats. They are, they are, they are similar because they are always used with similar words, right? This is the intuition behind it. It's just the, the language, the text, it has a certain structure. And deep learning, what it does, it just go goes and leverages this 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 thing, right? So let me go back to yeah. So two demos. So this is why I showed this once because um, these um, algorithms are very very easy to use. So if you want to experiment, if you want to code, building a chatbot, this this might be maybe a hard task to do for for a scientist for a researcher. But uh, with these algorithms, with word to vec you can you know like in couple of lines code, you can uh, yeah uh, train. Um, vectors from text document and uh, and identify semantical uh, related words. So they are similar uh, in meaning, but not exactly sy synonyms or autonyms because we know it because they appear close to each other in the vector space. So they have just uh, yeah similar vectors. And vectors are mathematical objects. So like like this, it could be anything. 
Uh, and mostly if you create vectors from text, it doesn't, yeah, if you just look to the number, it doesn't say you that much. So it's uh, also because it's, yeah, the data set is uh, probably so big in, in the case of, of a text. So, but uh, let's think about what we can do with it. Right. Uh, and the thing is, uh, uh, am I understand? Uh, um, do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what we can do with it, what happens? So, if we have a vector, if we have a good numerical representation for one word, we can identify. Uh, you know, like similar sentences, even if we put, uh, you know, like if, if you put uh, put uh, them together. So let's say, and this this is a classical um, example from sentiment analysis, but it uh, can be also applied to uh, question answering or even to uh, machine translation. So let's uh, think we have an example sentence, which is the president took the wrong decision. Right, and let's say this uh, either we want to create an answer to this sentence or we want to mark it as negative in in a, in, a, in a sense of sentiment analysis, and because the model knows all the similar words to it, it can go ahead and identify other formulations. So if someone says this governor takes a false decisions, which is probably not. Um, likely to be said because it would be a false decision uh, but yeah let's let's imagine uh, someone said like this or someone had a typo but the model is still very uh, yeah very flexible and it, it understands the, the the meaning of um, uh, what was said and not the, the words so this is actually a semant semantical representation what we call a semantical uh, representation, it's semantical meaning. So that's why you can ask uh, the chatbot, uh, who is the president of the United States? Or you can ask, who is the president of America? Who is the president, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, of, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't find any other <laughs> uh, synonyms, but yeah. So th the model will still know um, that you are asking about the president of, of the United States, right? Or maybe you can even ask, you know, like, because the, the new models, they are also very context, uh, context uh, sensitive. You can also ask who runs the United States. Yeah, it, the model still will know, okay, you are asking about, about the president uh, because of this. So it's uh, probably very... A very easy way to to think about it to what what happens what what is the ph phenomenon actually right so uh, this said let's again dive in a little bit into the newest technologies so we ha what we have uh, is uh, sequence to sequence uh, neural network model so it uses embeddings uh, and with sparse features so, and sparse features, this is also very confusing. This doesn't mean that the number of features is sparse. It just means it's a sparse uh, matrix or a sparse vector. Um, and sparse means it's it has lots of zeros and just a couple of ones because a sentence, sentence can be uh, short, right? So, and uh, what we do, we create dense vectors, dense features from these uh, sparse features. So, and then we have uh, recurrent neural networks. So we have, it could be LSTM, it could be a transformer attention model, which uh, actually creates again from these features, uh, dense features, right? And at the end, what we have is a, uh, softmax function, you know it from deep learning, uh, of course, and I won't go into that much detail, but this softmax function actually creates discrete predictions, which would be, in our case, the words, right? So uh, here's, you see, again, a very simple visualization for, uh, yeah, uh, from words to um, features, actually, uh, uh, a graph. 
and uh, the same uh, happens uh, uh, one layer after. So uh, here we have the weights. So it goes from features to 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 weights, and this is the the famous uh, function with uh, input weights and bias, uh, which is yeah our neural network mathematically formulated. And uh, yeah, this is what uh, happens in the language model uh, at the end. So there is a soft mat max uh, function which uh, runs over the whole matrix and uh, creates. Uh, uh, with the uh, product, with the dot product of the probabilities, uh, probability for uh, yeah for for um, one uh, answer. So this is actually uh, uh, what happens um, um, technically behind, and uh, and I also uh, often get questions. So uh, what what deep learning alg uh, algorithms or architectures are used? So actually, it's it's so wild. So it's um, uh, um, many uh, chatbots they use uh, Bird BRT. Like in in the case of ChatGPT, it it, it uses uh, yeah GTP uh, models. Um, so uh, and they uh, they are again uh, can be uh, based on transformers uh, attention. So. Um, Actually, at the end, yeah, it's on uh, on your hand also to choose uh, the the desired architecture, uh, and uh, yeah, there are many now in the in the science, and in in the industry actually, and uh, yeah, just to give you uh, last last uh, one of the last things to think about. So also, what is interesting, what is what comes from uh, from uh, actually uh, machine translation, is this encoder decoder philosophy, where uh, we try to input, let's say here, one language, then encode it, and then the decoder decodes it and outputs another language. But this could be also question answer. This could be um, a long test text, short text uh, in the case of summarization. So this architecture is also like very, yeah, very useful. Uh, so my conclusion, my sum summary is uh, AI, aka deep learning algorithms, they get better, definitely. Um, on the other hand, training data gets better. Uh, with demonstration of tools like ChatGPT, we understand even we uh, need more data, we need to know our data, we need to know the phenomenon, right? Uh, it uh, gets uh, better. And, and uh, on the same hand, computational power gets better, right? We have supercomputers. There are, of course, uh, limits to silicon, but quantum computing is coming. You know, special architectures uh, are coming for um, processing uh, uh, deep learning networks. Um, so, and of course, uh, we are uh, yeah witnessing uh, the great times where AI uh, is improving a lot. And yeah, with this, I thank you for listening, and let's discuss together if you have questions uh, and so on. Thank you, Joshua. <clears throat> it was very interesting talk and uh, we have uh, very little time for discussion and maybe first I will, I will uh, let's say read or recap the questions that appeared in the chat uh, during your, your talk. So uh, first it is a request uh, if you will be happy to share the slides with everybody on our website and perhaps if you could also share those codes if it is not uh, if it is okay with you that would be yeah. very, very useful. Um, a data set that we can provide to future uh, listeners. Sorry, I, sorry, sorry, one, one note. Uh, I actually need the references that you introduce one slide, the references. This one? No, 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 in the, uh, yeah, that's, that works as well. Thank you. I, I'm yeah, going to. Yeah, uh, will, will be present. Yeah, uh, so what I want to say one. also, I have a YouTube channel. And these code snippets, they are on GitHub. So they are all, uh, uh, already online available. If you Google it, you will find it. Just Google my name. 
But you know, just to make uh, some add some metadata to the description of your presentation, it will be easier to link what you presented with um, the, your YouTube live channel, the, your codes, GitHub, and so on and so forth. And more Definitely. Than, you know, I will. Yeah. I will send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the quite interesting question from uh, Lorella is the I think it is it relates to the bias of data and uh, why there was a chairman not a chairwoman as a, one of the closest words to the president. <laughs> well, I, I think the answer is quite uh, maybe obvious, but maybe you want to comment on on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what, what is interesting also, we have uh, at the University of Luxembourg uh, in, in SNT a small group working on, yeah, on legal uh, aspects, on bias aspects. Of course, the data set, it's uh, absolutely, uh, this comes from my data set because there, 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 there is a chairman more often in this data set. There are lots of biases and um, Deep learning community works, uh, yeah, works against that, um, and tries to, um, yeah, to to improve it. And I, uh, I, I hope both things. I hope um, one day our society will improve so much that we produce uh, data, you know, like data sets without biases. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, still, no matter what you do, because these are algorithms, yeah. Uh, this just learns from what it sees, it can always be biased and we need to control. That's why we need still probably the human beings to, to control and to, yeah, eliminate the biases. But absolutely, very, very right question. Uh, very legitimate question. Uh, you wanted to ask questions, please go ahead. Uh, we cannot hear you. Hello. Hello? Are you there? I can't hear you. I'm also not hearing. Uh, am I lost or? You can write in the chat. Yeah, maybe that will be the easiest. I can read it loudly uh, if you if you write in the chat. So in the meantime, I, I ask one question. Uh, you said that, uh, I mean, uh, I found it a very interesting idea. I mean, uh, uh, the, the one that we have to choose uh, the best uh, numerical representation of data. And uh, with the vocal communication, you said that we are going to, uh, one way would be to pick a window for uh, like taking data sample, right? And uh, uh, here's the thought, uh, do we have different windows? Uh, it, uh, uh, it is all, it is already uh, like working uh, uh, technology, right? Uh, do we use different window frame for different languages? Um, yeah, uh, this is a, also a, a, a thing, a question or a topic which was researched. Actually, what what is what should this window be actually? So, and there are several solutions. They are there are uh, let's say um, uh, language dependent solutions. So let's say uh, let, let me give you a, a, an example. By default, if we would use word to vec algorithm, it would uh, consider five words before the word and five words after. So the 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 window. Uh, is actually for one occurrence of the term of the word is 10, 10 words, right? Five to the left, five to the right. So, and then there is also in word to vec internally um, uh, a possibility to uh, set this window dynamically. So, kind of it emulates the sentence because, uh, you know, like your word might begin you know, like the beginning of a sentence and uh, the last sentence uh, does not have anything to do with it or a chapter or something like that. So uh, you can uh, set it to be dynamically. So it just only considers um, inside of one sentence. And plus, uh, yeah, there are some uh, ideas about uh, different languages because some languages 
uh, yeah, they kind of uh, uh, have grammatical uh, markers uh, bound to the word. So they say the same thing, uh, maybe with two words in, in a case of agglutinative languages, for example. And there are some other languages uh, which, which uh, very gr grammatical information is actually um, expressed by, 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 uh, yeah, by uh, particles, by words, you know, like by uh, pre and post positions. There maybe, uh, yeah, uh, you need less number of words so there is a research also on this one so this is you know thank you you're welcome i don't know Zulf, uh, i cannot see any of your comments yet in the chat uh, do you want to try to use your mic or we still cannot hear you so maybe i will Am I uh, actually still in, in, um, yeah, I will stop so I can see you better. Yeah, now I'm seeing you better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe uh, what I, I suggest that if you do have a question to George, Gunn, you can ask him uh, via email or meet him in person uh later on because uh, the time is coming to to the end and we we should uh, finish uh, unless there is a short question to be asked by somebody but if, if not uh, i would like to thank you so much george Gunn, for the very nice and insightful presentation and uh, to all for your attention and for the discussion uh, and, and uh, I will invite. Uh, I would like to invite you for the seminar next week. Uh, I will keep you posted about the, the topic and uh, and the link with the present of, of the meeting. So have a good day and uh, and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.